YouTube, we are back with another video. It's your boy Carl coming at you from Golden Grimmett Productions. This time around, we are going to be reacting to ESPN Analyst Gets Destroyed for Disrespecting Larry Bird. If you are new, please like, share, and subscribe to the video. I greatly appreciate it. It helps out the channel tremendously. Let's get into this video. Larry Bird is highly regarded as one of the 10 best players in NBA history. He was highly skilled, a great scorer, as well as a great passer. And when it came to his Celtics teams, he was highly valuable to their overall success. Now, with that being said, Larry Bird, like most older legends, is losing respect as time goes on. And when it comes to ESPN, I was absolutely floored to see a former NBA player insulting Larry Bird and saying point blank, he is not one of the greatest shooters in NBA history. And I think the NBA has gotten way past the balance and watching guys up and give up dunks to shoot threes on fast breaks. That kind of thing. I think that has hurt the game a lot. Now, that's me. I am old school, as we all know, J.J., perfect. But, you know, Bird shot plenty of threes. And they had Parrish and Mikhail. Bird shot plenty of threes. The best, and Bird is one of the great shooters in the history of the sport. I'm close. Bird, Bird shot threes. He never was a volume shooter from three. No, I know that, but he was. Okay, okay. So before he says what he's going to say, Larry Bird is the epitome of quality over quantity. Hear me when I say this. Quality over quantity. Larry Bird's quality of shot always was in big moments over the amount, volume, as he says, quantity. Larry was a shooter. One of the best the game's ever seen. Just because he didn't shoot at the volume that a Steph Curry or James Harden or Damian Lillard or even a Reggie Miller or Ray Allen does not take away the fact that he was one of the greatest shooters ever to live on this planet. They, and numbers, numbers make me mad sometimes. He was a great three-point shooter. He was not, not good. He was great. So stopping that clip right there, Reddick, at the very end, had the facial expression of someone who was annoyed and disgusted by Larry Legend being called one of the best shooters of all time. And for someone like Reddick, it might be hard to understand that players in the past were also great players. But for him, he is so preoccupied with boosting up today's players, he downplays and disrespects past eras like Bird, Kuzi, as well as Jerry West. Now, getting on to the actual argument, Larry Bird, in his era, there was a three-point line that was introduced his first year. But for middle school, high school, even college, he had no three-point line. That is some very important context a lot of fans either don't know or try to ignore. And one more thing I do want to add, when Bird came into the NBA, he was actually a power forward who played primarily on the block. And despite that, in his first year in the NBA, he shot 40.6% for behind the arc. In terms of percentage, he ranked third in the NBA, he was fifth in total threes, and sixth in threes attempted. As a rookie off the bat, Larry Bird was the best three-point shooter in 1980. And what makes it even more impressive, out of the qualifiers for three-point shooting, he was the only power forward to make the list, once again proving how much of a unicorn he really was. He's one of the top five three-point shooters of all time. He, well, that's how good Bird is. Oh, yes, we're, we're he not, we're, won we're three-point shooting not. contests. He was phenomenal. Bird's well, wait a, a great shooter. Wait and a I, minute, that, And Bird didn't shoot Bird's Bird's absolutely minute, one of the greatest doggy. shooters ever, but he's okay. not one of the top the, five three-point oh, yes, shooters. Top yes. three, whatever did you, you just did said. Did you see the three-point shooting that he put on, those clinics that he put on at the All-Star game? Again, did you watch? Doggy, it's just math. It's attempts, it's makes, and it's percentage. And there's no way you could ever argue Larry Bird is a top three three-point shooter of all time. You just... Okay, if you were to do it by the numbers, of course. And yeah. Yeah. But I don't think you can pull a player who shoots the three and compare him to Larry Bird in regards to that big shot ability. There were threes that were game-changing, series-changing, career-changing that Larry made. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Larry might not have had the volume, but you got to remember, he was an all-around threat on the court. His game was so inside-out, outside-in. He did everything on the floor. But they, uh, it's, uh, you know, I get aggravated when I think about numbers. 
You, you can't make that argument. You're, look, you're you facing it on the He's You're one basing of the best it on math and a time of when he played. I'm basing it on just shooting. Now, looking at JJ in this clip, he once again provides no context, saying, quote, it's about makes, attempts, and percentage. Looking at the raw numbers with no context, no data, and no additional information. That argument right there, going on stats alone, is highly disingenuous. For example, look at the mid and early 2000s. Back in that era, averaging 30 points was extremely difficult for people like Kobe, Allen Iverson, and even T-Mac. Being knowledgeable NB fans, we know that era had a much slower pace, the paint was more crowded, and scoring was definitely more difficult. When looking at the raw stats with no context, players in today's league averaging 30 were more efficient compared to Kobe, as well as Iverson. And like Reddick said, it's makes, attempts, and percentage. Yeah, it's crazy because you most like for real, for real. I think this is one of the least efficient eras we've ever been in for the NBA as far as like shooting. Bro, like this playoffs alone, we're watching teams shoot abysmal from the three. Every team is shooting threes. Every single one of them shooting threes. And it definitely did a harm to the league because of the amount of threes being taken, but it did change the game itself based off of a certain player who named the babyface assassin. But, yeah. They were more efficient back in the day at getting 30. Someone like SGA, off the pure raw stats, was a better scorer than Peak Iverson. And someone like Tatum, technically, was more impressive in the early 2000s Kobe. My overall point being, stats like usual require context. The same thing goes to Larry Bird and his shooting percentage. And speaking of that percentage, looking at Bird, after 1984, when he stopped playing power forward, his overall shooting splits were highly impressive. Shooting 50% from the field, 39.8% from three, and 90% from the line. During that time period, Five different times, he shot above 40% from three, and his highest season was at 42.7%. And going year by year, in 85, he was fourth in three-point makes, 86, he was first, 87, also first, and 88, he was fourth. For peak Larry Bird, from 85 to 88, he was first in threes made, first in threes attempted, and fourth in three-point percentage. For his overall era, in terms of volume and percentage, he was the Steph Curry of the late 1980s. Bird is a unbelievable Again, we had this discussion the other day. We had this discussion the other day about James Naismith. James Naismith invented the game. You were rewarded for putting the ball in the basket. There's plenty of people that have shot more, made more, and guess what? Made more at a higher percentage than Larry Bird from three. I'm not saying Larry Bird is not one of the greatest shooters ever. He's not one of the greatest three-point shooters ever. Yes, you is. cannot make that argument. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, okay. So because James Harden has shot more threes than Larry Bird, that means he's a better shooter than Larry Bird. That's basically what he's saying. That's a that's cap. That's cap. Do you know how many people on that list? Bro, Al Corver is on the, the top 10 list. He is not a better shooter than Larry Bird, bro. Come on, man. All right, messed up. For putting the ball in the basket. There's plenty of people that have shot more, made more, and guess what? Made more at a higher percentage than Larry Bird from three. I'm not saying Larry Bird is not one of the greatest shooters ever. He's not one of the greatest three-point shooters ever. Yes, you is. cannot make that argument. Yes, I'm is. sorry. Because the 80s are so much different. There's physicality, the way they guarded people. I'm, you couldn't can you can we, can we get Doug, I've been trying to make a thing. point. Seriously, can I've been trying to make a point for you, thing? Doug. So once again, Reddick has zero historical context and wants to make basketball black and white and about percentage and stats. And looking at Larry Bird, like I said before, he was one of the pioneers for the high volume three point shooters from day one in the NBA. And for a big man, he was especially unique in his time because most forwards didn't dare step out to shoot threes. And Bird's overall influence, much like Steph Curry, had a big effect on the game going forward. For guys like Dirk Nowitzki, Kevin Durant, and even Jason Tatum. And one thing I do want to nail home, in 1980, three-point shooting was a gimmick and a joke for most coaches. But for Larry Bird, 
in a five-year period, he legitimized it, was shooting upwards of 40%, really not knowing what he was doing for his time. And like I said before, peak Larry Bird was an elite and all-time great three-point shooter. As from 85 to 88, he shot 41.4% from behind the arc when the league average was 29.5%. Once again, showing Bird was light years ahead of the curve and is a unicorn for his time period given his size, volume, as well as percentage. And one more thing I do want to reiterate is stats with zero context. As any average Joe off the street can look at a box score, look at a percentage, and read it and tell if it's good or bad. But a real smart NBA fan, what they do. Hey, we just gonna appreciate that a phenomenal play that you just did. Like that, that touch and go, oh my god, that was amazing. They look at the context, the peak, and the overall era. As looking at raw stats as a simpleton, someone like Kobe and his career stats aren't as impressive as Damian Lillard when it comes to scoring. As Dame compared to Kobe, averages more points, a higher true shooting percentage, higher three percentage, and higher free throw percentage. What anyone in their right mind say Dame Lillard was a better overall scorer than Kobe. Because looking at the numbers, remember, makes, attempts, and percentage, Dame Lillard, in fact, was a better scorer. And once again, looking at Bird, at his absolute peak in the playoffs, he was phenomenal. As an 86, he averaged 25.9 points, 9.3 boards, 8.2 assists on 52-41 and 93 splits. For NBA history, Larry Bird was the first player ever to have a high volume 50, 40, 90 postseason run. And since Bird, only Katie and Kawhi have joined him on that list. Let's say Steph Curry, for example. Right. When I watch Steph Curry off the ball in a playoff game, oh, he's great. getting grabbed and held by Marcus Smart, they're attached to him at all times. Right. Then when I watch Larry Bird come off a pin down, and no one's within five feet of them, and they're shooting the gap. You're telling me one is more physical than the other? You're telling me that's more physical than, than Steph Curry being grabbed and held for 48 minutes? Now, stopping Redick right there, when talking about any era of basketball, there are always good defensive teams and bad defensive teams. But for Redick, when it comes to Bird's era, he only focuses in on the bad defense. Compared to Steph's era, where he totally ignores the bad defense and the awful teams like Houston, Charlotte, and San Antonio. And as a basketball fan on YouTube, it takes about five minutes to find Larry Bird playing against very physical defense who grabs him, holds him, double teams him, and does all types of things to limit his shots and his shooting space. And when speaking of the 80s, when it came to the Pistons, they had Dennis Rodman, Joe Dumars, the Lakers had Cooper and Worthy, Philadelphia had Bobby Jones and Caldwell Jones, players like Allen Robinson, Larry Nance, Sidney Moncrief, Buck Williams, who had great defenders on all-time great defensive teams. And just like Reddick, I could cherry-pick bad plays here, bad plays there, from any era. At the end of the day, it makes no sense doing that. You have to watch the film, understand the era, and provide context to what you're watching. Yes, back in the day, they played very close and compact to the basket. That's because back then, they didn't know the value of three-point shooting. But someone like Bird was a pioneer and an innovator of three-point shots for big men and just players in general. And one last thing I do want to throw in there, looking at Larry Bird, Mad Dog Russo brought up the NBA Finals. For Bird in the Finals, for his career, in five trips collectively, he shot 42.2% from behind the arc. And when it came to clutch time play, in the final five minutes, shot a staggering 42.8%. If you look at three-point shooting for Larry Bird, at the biggest times when the stakes were highest, he elevated his game and rose to the occasion. And like Pat Riley said, Larry Legend is the guy you want taking the shot when the clock's winding down. So that right there is my last overall point. And when it comes to Bird, I personally think he's a top 10 shooter of all time. If you want to say top five, I definitely wouldn't push back too heavily given his era and how good he was for his time period. And for Redick, as you guys know, I am not a big fan of him 
or his takes regarding past legends. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Okay. Just to give my, my ending take, I look at it like this. Numbers can either help or hurt you, and they can actually do both in regards to the arguments um, when it comes to basketball. When they talk about volume, there's a lot of NBA players who are on that list right now who are not like that top 10 list who aren't better than Larry Bird at three-point shooting. They just shot a lot of them over the course of a lengthy career. So, yeah, of course they're going to have the numbers to back them. People only ever mention, like, now nah, I'll say this. When you talk about three-point shooters like Stephen Curry, you can make your arguments as to why Steph Curry would be better than Larry Bird. Just of an, of an overall general sense of him being a player, I'm not talking about the quality of the shot. Like, matter of fact, we're talking about the quality. If you look at Steph Curry shooting in-game during the regular season, you can make your case just because all he has is his three. Well, that's not all he has, but I can see why people would make the case for Steph Curry being the greatest shooter of all time just because he revolutionized what the three ball looked like. Larry revolutionized what the three ball meant in the 80s, and Steph did it in the new era now. Because now everybody wants to shoot the three. The different the difference is we've never seen anybody as small as Steph shoot 40, 50, 90. You know what I'm saying? That's amazing because Larry did it first. So you can make your case for Larry being in the top three, and you can make your case for or top five. You can make your case for Steph being the greatest shooter of all time. It's all about your preferences, all about what you want to go off of. They can take it away from Steph Curry from him not hitting big shots, but they can take it away from Larry Bird that he didn't shoot as many threes. There's always going to be a pushback when it comes to that, but to say that he's not top five because he lacked the quantity but he had the quality is crazy. And that's just my personal take on Larry. And I think he's top five three-point shooter of all time. That's just me. Um, but I've enjoyed this video, man. It's been your boy Carl from Golden Grimmin Productions. Until the next one, peace.